In the last couple of lectures, I showed you how you could use, uh, let's say, depth. Okay, and depth is listed right there in the brush palette. I showed you how you could use sample radius to control how sensitive your brush is. Stabilize orientation. That was really important. And then the last one I showed you is preserve edge. Okay, each one of these features is an algorithm or an adjustment to the algorithm that's designed to give you um, more or less control. It's designed to make it easier for you to do soft surface or for you to get more uh, specific shapes out of things. In the other lectures, I also told you that you have already created three very important brushes inside of ZBrush just by adjusting those four settings. And so I'll tell you exactly which ones they are right now. Now by adjusting depth and sample radius and stabilize orientation, in fact we forgot something here, let's put the picker palette in. And this is once orientate. Okay, so by adjusting depth, sample radius, stabilize orientation, you created the trim dynamic brush. And I'll show you. We'll do a comparison. It's all it really is. It's trim dynamic. By preserve edge, we created the polish brush. There's a minor difference between the original polish brush and what we did, but it's very close. And then by adjusting the picker, once orientate, we created the trim adaptive, which was very prominently featured in ZBrush 4 R3, uh, and really kind of, you know, lost its thunder to trim dynamic, <laughs> which is just beyond awesome. So let's compare it with uh, what we did with trim dynamic, the first brush, and then just go down the list. So clay brush is here. We have sample radius of a 0.626. Let's set it back to about 0.35, which is where we had it. 0.35. And uh, let's turn our preserve edge off, because that was the last feature we did. And let's make sure that picker palette is at continuous orientate. So continuous orientate, sample radius, and depth is at zero. Let's go into the trim dynamic brush. I've got it selected. Depth is zero. Samples, 0.45, stabilize orientation, 55, picker palette, continuous orientate. But what's really important is if you look at the thumbnail where it says current brush, this is in the upper left of the screen, current brush, the number four, trim dynamic, base type clay. What that tells you is that the trim dynamic brush is the clay brush. And that's it, with some modifications. Nothing, nothing else. And if you go through here and you look at any of these other items, you're not going to find too much that's different. You're not going to find much. Curve might be a little different, and it has this directional masking on, which is kind of a nice little feature. It's more about control and really keeps the uh, focus of the brush very clean along your stroke. Now let's change one feature in this brush. Let's come up here into Picker Palette and go into Once Orientate. I've selected the clay brush, by the way. So in the clay brush, we're getting the Once Orientate selected, sample radius, stabilize, orientation are all the same. And then let's go in and compare that with trim adaptive. Okay, notice that sample radius is really low. We experimented with that. Preserve edge, stabilize orientation is off. But the most important thing about adaptive edge, it is the clay brush and it has once orientate on. And that's it. Now I, I'm telling you there is nothing else. I'm I'm I was literally there when these brushes are being created and that's that's what we did. We looked for the settings that made the most sense and then we created a preset 
And you'll look at this and be like, oh man, ZBrush has 20,000 brushes. This is amazing. But these are brushes you can make. You may not want to, or you may want to. Depends. You know, are you one of those tinkerers, or do you just want to grab this and start tinkering with your vision? It's up to you. But knowing how these brushes uh, change with just simple adjustments to things like the picker palette or the sample subpalette, and that's just one palette out of you know how many of them it's really important and if you are not taking a class like the one like this one then you're gonna have to go through and figure all this out by yourself does this little change in the uh, edit curve make a difference does that directional masking make that much of a difference all of that's going to be in your brain and it's going to be difficult but that's my job that's what I, that's why I worked at Pixelogic. That's why I'm offering this class. That's why I built this company so I can be teaching you how to control ZBrush and get the best result possible. It's a life mission of mine. So the next feature we want to look at is the uh, next brush that we literally created is a brush called H Polish, and this is a beautiful brush. I'm just going to press H and it actually comes up right away. It's the only brush with an H in it. So H I da 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 da. Where'd you go? You're in front of the eyes, Ryan. There we go. H polish. Look at its base type. Okay. I'll make this a little easier. Up in the upper left. Base type equals polish. And I'll tell you a little a little secret. It's very, very close to clay. Okay, it is its own base type, and by base type I mean it's its own algorithm. And if you wanted to kind of just a little visual of, of how that works, the most important thing to a brush is the algorithm. That's literally the math. How does it calculate what it does to a point in space? And then from there you get things like samples, the sample uh, samplers palette you get things like picker masking that all have a diminishing level of output a little diminishing level of control over what happens masking has a major amount of control pickers pretty powerful masking is kind of an on or off it's not going to change the ultimate behavior of a brush very much so when they change types you know there's a big difference uh, and in the case of polish and clay uh, they're they're quite quite similar and the most important thing to polish is that preserve edge that's the most important thing and in fact let's scroll back in time before we used H polish and let's see what we can do with the original H polish. See how it's doing pretty much exactly what ours was doing before. In fact, I like ours better now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to press Alt. Alt can do some cool things with H polish. this is really going to give me a nice clean edge. The orientation is too too much. And let's undo that. And I'd say this is probably the algorithm that's giving me this little bit of difference from what Clay was doing. So I am right now going to create my own brush. But similar effect. That preserve edge is pulling geometry in. Okay, that's what this brush does. Is it pulls that's what that setting does, preserve edge. It pulls that geometry in. And really gets a nice clean line in there. So let's just go back our clay brush, the low sample radius, a good stabilized edge, and a strong preserve edge. I'm going to just delete that. Was doing very similar work. 
and we smooth this out a little. Let's see, just turning once orientate, that was what was killing us. There we go. On we go from there. Now, once you've created your own brush, they're really easy to save. And I kind of like this one that I've got here. So all you got to do is go to the top brush save as I go to um, Z startup brush preset and I will put it right in here uh, Ryan's polish this is probably not a brush with enough change that I would actually keep it in there I'm just doing this to show it to you um, and this is an important point sometimes you create your own brushes and most of the time what you'll do is just modify what's there because they're just tiny setting changes it's up to you but anyways you've seen now how a brush goes from soft to hard well it's the same brush by just throwing a couple of features in there picker right and depth that makes all the difference in the world if you understand that you're in control of your sculpting you are able to explain this to people you will be in a troubleshooting position you'll know what's going on and uh, maybe even start your own company and you and I can compete with each other and just have tons of fun <laughs> so good luck with everything you do I hope this little preview of feature framework was useful I hope you learned and uh, good luck with everything